Utopia Tears Midwinter's Reprise. Uh, this is another free to play visual novel available on Steam. I've heard a lot of good things about this one though. So I have no idea what this is about. But as is the case with most of these visual novels, I usually start off not knowing what these are about. So we're just gonna go ahead and take a look, see what kind of story we'll be opening today. You've heard of the Mayfly, right? It's one of those odd winter days when the snow is falling but it isn't cold. Either late November or the beginning of December, right around the time when the dollar stores start playing Christmas music and the couples go skating. One of those odd winter evenings, the same old 3 o'clock p.m. through the lens of the classroom window. I would describe the muted texture of the light through the glass, but it's all become all too familiar. It'd be like raving about the miracle of flowers blooming in spring. The novelty's gone. Chairs screech against the tiled floor, and students chatter all around, but the sounds fall on me, weightless. The mayfly? The bug that lives for only a day once it grows its wings? It's a great metaphor. You must have seen it before. My mind wanders sometimes. It's like being stuck in a room with the TV set to local news, almost muted but not quite, or like reading a boring web page because you're too lazy to click away. Having a voice in your head that won't shut up it used to bother me, but I can handle it now. Listen to music on the way home, play a video game before you go to bed, kill time in any way you can and it won't be so loud. Ever wonder why they even bother? Whoops the menu button. It's simple really. You pick up your books, stand up, put on your gloves as you walk through the early winter chill. Get home, make a snack, relax, and let the process repeat itself. Life is the easiest thing in the world when you think about it. But sometimes, memories resurface. The horrible, red-brown, that encroaches on my vision, creeping from a box, locked safely away. Oh, it's cold. I hadn't noticed before, but it looks like it's snowing. Was I out for that long? I was walking home from school a moment ago, I'm sure. Or is this a dream? That would make sense, but then why am I wearing my school uniform, and why is my wallet in my pocket? Well, that doesn't prove anything. I might as well roll with it. It's seriously pitch black here. I can make out the snowflakes just fine, but nothing seems to be lighting them. I better start moving before I freeze to death. Ah! That light! It's... You've come. Y you. Thank you for coming to see me. It's lonely here, you know? Lonely. Yeah, I can't deny that. It's a peaceful prison trapped in the darkness under this soft snowfall. But it's a prison. What's the matter? Aren't you glad to see me? I... She looks familiar, I'm sure of it. The memory teases me like a vivid lucid dream. But I can't grab hold of it. It's been such a long time. I thought you had been a casting. Ah, uh, I open my mouth, but the words are lost. The more I search for the memory, the more her eyes bewitch me. As snowflakes land on the girl's hair, I force the first words out of my mouth. Who are you? Do you really not remember me? What a shame. We have so much to catch up on. Her smile is confident, mysterious. Somewhere between angelic and doll-like. There's nothing to worry about. After all, we have all the time in the world. So then, who are you? She looks me in the eye my heart stops. I'm the person you wish you never met. She embraces me and my senses freeze until a colour strikes my eye against the monochrome backdrop. Hanging in the stillness, a red ribbon drifts from the side of her hair, an 
and on the inside of the ribbon something is written. But just as fantastic as the as that is the fact that my words are scrambled, blurred, even though my eyes are only inches from it. That ribbon, don't you remember? It was your... Her voice fades away. I glance at the ribbon again, but before I can move closer, my stomach flips upside down. Uh, the girl's warm fades from my arms. Uh, uh, uh. Is she disappearing? Um, this, this whole world is... A knife pierces my heart as I realize something. It's not this world that's disappearing. It's me. Oni-chan. Hmm. Oni-chan. Are you up? That sounds familiar. Mark, we're gonna be late. Ah! Are you even listening to me? Yeah, yeah, I heard you. Jeez, it wouldn't kill you to be a little more gentle. Gentle? But I'm your cute little sister. I'm automatically gentle. That's like saying I'm automatically dependable because I'm your older brother. Wait. See? If you're not the defendable sibling you're supposed to be, that gives me the legal right to find new and exciting ways to tease you. And who was it that wrote this law? More importantly, I have a history test this morning, so I'll leave you behind if I have to. Pouting, my diligently evil little sister runs down the stairs. Can't she find a more normal form of torture? <sighs> ah. It's bright up. Pleasantly bright. I can get lost just looking at that pale blue sky, although I fear the cold that accompanies it. See, this is why I hate winter. Nature has no mercy for the northern hemisphere. Actually, does that make a difference? Technically every country has to be part of a hemisphere, so there must be warm regions in the northern hemisphere, and even so the southern hemisphere would be... Mark! I've been working on my Hokuto Shinkan and... I'm coming, I'm coming! The last time she tried this... I shudder to think of it. Omai wa mo shinderu. I'm pretty sure I know who my next practice subject would be if you make me fail my test. Isn't it usually practice partner? Not practice subject? So, that's my little sister, Rina. Since he started at my school, life has been hell. Well, maybe that's an exaggeration. She's a nice girl and all. She takes care of me, makes me lunch, forces me to buy her stuff. Ah, uh, see what I mean? I'm out of compliments already. And that threat certainly wasn't the first. Ouch! Stupid razor. Dad was supposed to show me how to use this thing. Anyway, Rin is a strange girl to put it nicely. She always rattles on about these crazy robot wars and melodramatic love stories that she watches trying to find new and exciting ways to pull me into her world. I haven't figured out why she calls me Oni-chan yet though. Is it ironic? Ironically unironic? Ironic because she thinks I would think it's subtly unironically unironic? I can only conclude that it's part of some devious scheme that I can yet to catch wind of. A tip of the iceberg, so to speak. If the iceberg were a blood-related little sister. But as much as I like to criticize her, I can't complain. She still does better than me at school. Alright. I'm almost done. Oh, and she also does a better job of cooking and budgeting than me. And she never sleeps in, and the only time she's late for class is when I hold her back. Now do you see why life with her is hell? Good morning! Did you sleep well? I slept perfectly fine until I was awoken by a certain someone. How could you say that? Oh, uh, you should be thankful to have a cute girl like me wake you up every morning. You're not supposed to call yourself cute. Is that because you're blood related and you're fr That's not why! I mean, it's a little vain, don't you think? And it's not very cute. True. But what if I'm only doing it to unnerve you? Good point. Well, I do have to thank you for keeping me on my toes all the time. Yeah, look, like my mother is what I wanted to say, but I imagine her twitching smile and my life flashes before my eyes. So, Rin. 
You have a test this morning? Yep. I did a quick review with my friends yesterday, so you don't need to worry about it. I wasn't worried. Ah, is that your way of hiding your affection? Was that even remotely implied? I'm sure you passed the test. I just want to make sure you don't forget anything and end up failing for some stupid reason. Like that time I accidentally brought my Game Boy instead of my calculator? Yes. Like that time. I was only 12. It was an innocent mistake. Only 12. Regardless, you get what I'm saying. Just don't screw up. I know, I won't. But aren't your exams coming up as well? Uh oh. I was to going to go over to Lucas House and study over the weekend. Or something like that. Even for you, that's not a very convincing lie. Psychic! But I did make that up on the spot. It wouldn't kill you to have a bit of faith in me. If I said I'll study, I'll study. Really? You spend your whole Saturday afternoon doing math problems and rereading your social science notes? I'm tempted to say, what notes? But there really isn't a problem here. Well, would you look at the time? Don't change the subject. We're already late! Well then, we'll have to continue at lunch, right, Oni-chan? That smile is so much more endearing before you get to know her. Made it! I leap past the front door as the clock strikes 8, inhaling a lungful of December air. Not bad, Mark. Not bad at all. You were taking so long with your bag that I thought I'd really have to put the gloves on. I thought you were going to leave me if I took so long. I, I was only kidding. Leave my only brother to alone to walk to school on such a cold, cold day? I couldn't. And yet you can practice your anime fighting techniques on me. Well, when you look at it that way. But you know, mastery of the martial arts can be extremely important. What does that have to do with anything? It's important, really. Yeah, yeah. I know. Self-defense and all that. No, no not just self-defense. It's an extra weapon in your arsenal. What? Okay, picture this. Imagine that you're fighting against an enemy who already knows your techniques. And why would I be doing that? Because the person who challenged you? Because you kidnapped the princess? Use your imagination! But what if the princess is in, this, is in another cup? Then you just have to go look for her. Ouch. Anyway, let's say you end up in combat with someone that, who knows that you're good at long range weapons like a crossbow. They already know your weakness. All you have to do is dash forward and fight at a closer range. The archer won't be able to react fast enough, and the attacker will have the advantage. What if you're using a mid-range weapon, like a lance? A lance? That's easy. A well-trained warrior will be proficient with both bows and axes. Everyone knows that axe beats the lance. Don't you play Fire Emblem? True. But then couldn't you just learn magic and attack from a distance? Yes, but what if your enemy knows you're a magician? A skilled axe wielder will eliminate you with a single strike, no critical necessary. Every magician needs an ace up his sleeve. And that ace is... <clears throat> and that ace is martial arts? That's one option. You see, magicians draw their power internally, not externally. Magic, unlike sorcery, flows through a natural internal circuit before you can be used in the form of a spell. This use of the natural circuits can drain much of an amateur magical energy, resulting in the weakening of a magus of government ability. In this scenario, even a trained magus will be susceptible to the attacks of an ordinary human. More so, if said human is skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat, though it's unlikely scenario, it would be prudent for a magus to... Enough with the info dumps! And this isn't fate! And this isn't an Asuverse. That was an Asuverse, right? I'm up to date with my enemy references, or visual novel references in this case. <clears throat> Fine, I don't need you. She taps the Twitter icon on her phone and runs away. Okay, I may have been a bit hard on her back there, but this isn't a bad outcome either. I think the streets will be a little more busy in the morning, but no one ever passes by here. It's hard to get used to it if you're from the city, but I've lived in the suburbs my whole life and I like the peace and quiet. It's nice. Let your mind wander. Hmm. Let your mind wander the things you'd rather avoid. Mark. Huh? What was that? I look around and momentarily spot a figure, but it disappears before my eyes. Strange. She looked familiar. Meh. Can't be that important. Two weeks later, I would look back on that moment as the first in a series of very, very silly assumptions. 
Mark, you're actually early. A familiar voice welcomes me in from the cold. In front of me stands a young man that I've known since the beginning of high school. And that... I sometimes wish I didn't know. On time is more like it. We have barely five minutes until the bell. It's still an accomplishment, coming from you. Oh hey, did you bring your notes for the presentation? My other friend, Lillian, voices a question politely, unlike a certain little sister. <coughs> er, well, when it was on the computer until midnight and my laptop needed recharging and... And your house was constructed without power outlets, of course. Fine, fine, I'll print them all the lunch. And there goes the bell. <sighs> I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm actually looking forward to a boring lecture if it means I can relax. The teacher's voice drones on, and on, and on. I only know of one way to escape. Jumping out the window might have long-term consequences though, so I'll be content with uh, staring through it. Whenever I'm bored at school, I, will, I always like looking out at the weather and thinking about how I would rather be anywhere else but here. Although, fortune has treated me with nothing but a sadistic little sister and a power of unfinished homework this morning, so maybe I'm better off in class after all. Mark, am I hearing things? Mark! It's just like this morning. Is this someone's stupid idea of a prank? I'm sure it's just some kid of nothing better to do with their time, but... I can forget that. Alright, I know what I have to do. Pinpointing the source of the sound, I spin around and glam my target. She's not getting away this time. Err. The class stares at me. Lucas turns around. I sit back down. Awkwardly. Lunch, finally. No matter how many years pass, nothing beats the taste of cold meat and freedom. It's quiet. Lucas sighs audibly and I follow. I still don't get how Rin can sacrifice a lunch break to study for a test, but she hardly ever studies at home. It's far from the strangest thing she's done. Point taken. So, how was that game I lent you? Oh, right. To be honest, I'm not really into, into those dating si- They're not dating sims if they don't have statistics. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I'll check it out when I get time. Right now I'm busy with- I was about to say schoolwork, but that lie wouldn't last a second. Stuff. Yeah, stuff. Mark, you do know what this means, don't you? I really think I can see the sunlight glint off those glasses. This means you have yet to experience modern Japanese visual culture in all its glory! Can you please shut up now? Surely you've found yourself taking a peek at Rin's DVD collection at some point in the past 16 years. Haven't you ever felt disconnected with the path the story takes? Discontented, my bad. I'll take that as a no. Protagonists always have plot armor and suspense stories, and the main heroine always wins in romances. Even aside from being dumbed down by the awkward transition, transition between two inherently different mediums, haven't you ever felt like that story isn't working? Does it not feel like the main character is a brainless idiot, and you could do so, so much better job than him? Haven't you felt like giving an idiotic protag a punch in the face and telling him to choose the shy innocent library girl over the deceitful Onechan Chakara who can't go on a date without thinking about her little brother? This statement may contain a slight amount of bias. Cough, 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 cough. Ahem, 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 ahem. Ore e ahem. Ore e ahem. Ahem. At any rate, there's only one solution to problems like these. You. Play. The game. I sense an evil chuckle as he finishes. As if he wants to add, and soon you'll be just like me. <laughs> Well, like I said, I'll get to it eventually. Lucas kicks his feet up. It really is a good game, though. And the school uniforms kind of resemble ours, don't you think? As much as I hate to admit it, he's right. Our school is infamous for its elaborate uniforms that don't match its academic re reputation. That isn't going to make me play it any faster. Then I'll bother you every day until you do. Do you dare to underestimate my persistence? The bell signals the end of lunch and we head to class. Away from each other, thankfully. I did it. It took a few years, but I did it. I made it back. And it won't be long before I talk to him again. A clock ticks in the background as a girl gazes pensively out the window. I'm getting nervous just thinking about it. Nervous and a little excited. 
It's been so long. What will I do if he's changed? This whole plan will be pointless. I have to stay calm. I know what I'm doing and I've thought it all through. Just stick to the script. But I'm nervous. So, so, so nervous. I like sunsets, I really do. I could live without long walks on a beach, but sunsets? They're special. Cliché doesn't have anything, doesn't have to make things less special. Not that it matters much. Storybook romances stay in the storybooks. It's just nice to catch a glimpse of stories sometimes, be it the MP3 shuffle gods grunting divinely selected background music, or a perfect twilight after a day of rain. Whew, thanks again for the help. Don't worry about it. It's not like I've anything better to do. I slide down from the windowsill, but my feet hesitate. Something about the red tint of the classroom and Lillian's smell is... Discomforting. Discomforting and uncannily familiar. Does the school library always get this much work? I can see why you asked for a hand. No, the library usually maintains itself with the help of the teachers. We just have, we just have some extra things to take care of before the end of the term. Paperwork, mostly. Sounds tough. All work and no pay. I think you mean no play. Wait, you're getting paid? No, but... Well, there you go. Mm. You win this one. Anyway, as I was trying to say, I don't mind the extra work. We help out because we want to, right? Though it's nice to have an extra pair of hands from time to time. Ah. Right. Besides, you always end up owing me favors. This is just one of them. Anyway, shall we head home? Yeah, let's go. I grab my bag and rush to hold the door. It can be nice to stay back after school, can't it? On the occasion, the weather is nice today. I try to find something other than the weather to comment on, but... It's always cold in the winter, but it feels good when you're inside. It's like looking at a snow globe. Er, does that make sense? Now that you mention it, I don't think it does. It made sense in my head. Don't worry about it, I know what you mean. Do you? I think. Hmm. Hmm. What? It couldn't have been that important, right? I suppose. Lillian smells Riley. Really? Riley. Riley about something and walks up ahead, frizzy hair lit up by the sun. We walked alone for the next few minutes, and I tried to nonchalantly wave goodbye. I can't shake the feeling that something was off about her today. Maybe I'm imagining things thanks to that voice in my head, but she almost seemed as tense as me. <sighs> I better get better head back before Rin starts worrying. I turn to walk home, but... Mark... Okay, that's it. The world just isn't normal today. Mark! I'm getting to the bottom of this. I walk for a few seconds and pretend not to notice before spinning around. It's a girl. She stands out. Long purple hair and red ribbon swaying in the breeze. She reappears in an alleyway to my left and I see her lips move. Follow me. The minute I step towards her, she points to her right. It's the road that leads back to my school. I look back at her. Or at least I would have, had she not already disappeared. That arrogant! Alright, now she's really done it. I'll run through this town all night if I have to. You're messing with the wrong guy. Before I realize it, the sky darkens and clouds drift in. From time to time, I catch a glimpse of something white out of the corner of my eye, but it disappears before I can identify it. She's deliberately dashing through the side streets, and she always seems to be exactly one street ahead. I gasp for breath as I reach the school building. The girl stands daintily at its entrance. You! Stop! <laughs> she grins and runs inside. She has a graceful quality about her. I say run, but it's more like she's gliding. Of course that's not gonna stop me. I catch a glimpse of her feet at the bottom of the staircase. To the left hall. You're running out of places to run. Stairs. Again? No, wait. 
These are the stairs to the roof. Why is this door unlocked in the first place? No matter, it's over now. The sky turns black before I realized it, and snow drifts cautiously down. The last piece of the puzzle falls into place. The purple head go, the snow, the black sky. I saw it all in my dream. The girl looks at me from the edge of the roof. Thank you for following me, Mark. Oh, how many things should I be yelling at her yelling yelling at her for right now? But I can't. My mind isn't functioning like it should. Scattered images from a time I'd rather forget flash through it. First of all, let me apologize for luring you out like this. It was the only way I could talk to you alone. She steps closer. Of all the things I want to say, only one line comes out. Who are you? Don't worry yourself about over minor details like that. You will remember me soon enough. Soon enough? What kind of vague hint is that? The past will fall into place eventually. It has a habit of doing that. She pauses and looks up at the sky. The snow collects on her hair. You might not remember me yet, but I remember you. I've been waiting to see you for a long, long time. She points eyes at me and I can't look away. Will you help me, Mark? Will you help me accompany me long enough for you to recover your memories? That's a strange request. My thoughts vanish. I nod unthinkingly. I will, but you owe me something first. Tell me your name. I feel her warmth before we even touch. She walks up to me and she pauses an inch away, breath turning to mist. Mira. I hear her name and her ribbon flutters before me. The memories taunt me. I've seen her, seen this, but... A cold breeze strikes me as she steps back. I'll visit you some day soon. In the meantime, if you ever need me, come to this rooftop by yourself when the sky turns black. If you call to me, I'll come to you. What are you, a vampire? Maybe. A ghost? She smiles faintly. I'll leave that up to you. One by one, her footsteps grow distant. Well then, goodbye, my... Her final words are lost as she steps off the edge of the roof. Wait, steps off the edge? What the... I dash to the edge of the roof as fast as I can and look down. But there's nothing. Not even a footprint on the freshly fallen snow. My head is spinning. I don't want to think. I don't want to think. I don't want to... It's there. It's there and it keeps coming back. I see her and... What was it she called herself? The person I wish I'd never met? Is she here to haunt me? But then why do I feel so? The girl in the sunset watches me. Like a figure in a faded photograph, she watches me. Like a portrait. Like yourself in a house of mirrors, watching. Always watching. She just won't blink. All the while. The snow continues to fall. Mira's figure dances through my mind, trapping me somewhere between curiosity and awe. It's the beginning of winter. As the snow dusts the city streets, I can't help imagining that her footprints will turn up very, very soon. Right, I believe that was day one. So, I'm gonna leave it up to here. The title at the top says Saturday December 11th so I'm assuming this is moving on to the second day. So far so good. Seems intriguing. And I'll see you in the next part I guess. We will continue this and get to the bottom of it. So this has been Sepia Tears. Thanks for watching. Carl out.